Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 18th, 2022, on 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new storm to be forming in the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. We got a storm alert out there, so what do you need to know? So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet-ish, at least for the moment. We do have a disturbance now moving into portions of Guatemala and also up here towards the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize. This area of disturbance has a 30% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico and northwest from there into portions of coastal Mexico or even far southern Texas. We will be monitoring this dead tropical wave right now. It is still a tropical wave. So we'll be moving into the Caribbean over the next several days, and there is some hints on some of the forecast models that some development could occur once this enters the western part of the Gulf of Mexico, in the western part of the Caribbean, the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then we'll be watching other tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. So if you look at the National Hurricane Center uh, forecast here again over the next couple of days, we only have this one area of disturbance right now that is currently located over portions of Central America. This again is moving generally towards the northwest and will be entering the Gulf of Mexico sometime probably by tomorrow or on Saturday, where after some additional development is certainly possible. Now, we have not seen any other disturbances marked out here in the Atlantic, but I would not be surprised to at least see a small area, maybe even a 10% area do get highlighted over the next couple of days it, it certainly wouldn't surprise me if that does happen again looking at our overall system we could have a tropical system this has not been yet designated an invest but it would not surprise me if that classification gets marked uh, sometime today or tomorrow so what could be invest area 99l emerging into the bay of campeche and southern gulf here by friday so by tomorrow and this will be moving up generally towards the northwest here and could impact portions of South Texas or portions of coastal Mexico. Either way, rainfall is going to be the main concern here. Do not see this. I really do not see this being becoming a significant wind threat, uh, but we will continue to monitor that. And if we actually look at the visible satellite this morning, we noticed that again, the convective mass has certainly grown quite substantially. Um, there's actually a sufficient amount of convection with this today. Uh, this has been causing some pretty significant flooding issues, especially in Belize and portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. Big area of shower and thunderstorm activity right now over that uh, landmass. And this will be moving again generally towards the northwest. Now, NHC has the area of disturbance kind of marked right over here. It's probably a little bit further north than that. But either way, again, this is moving into the Gulf of Mexico uh, by tomorrow more than likely. And we're going to have to see just how this progresses with time. If we actually look at the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity from the 06E run, there's actually nothing that really happens with this. You notice that uh, there's nothing that really happens. This is actually the impulse of energy here by 2 p.m. on Saturday, and there's absolutely nothing going on here. And if we look at the European, a big reason for that now uh, there is at least a favorable wind environment at least through about early Saturday. That begins to rapidly diminish, though, as we get a trough that kind of digs down here. Got another uh, ridge of high pressure out here, and that's basically forcing a lot of this northwestern flow over portions of uh, Texas. And basically that dives down into and around our system. And that's probably going to not allow for any substantial development. And you can see there uh, by late Saturday into Sunday, the development chances actually shut off because there's just too much shear. The overall moisture envelope isn't all that bad. Again, there's actually going to be some pretty substantial moisture pocket around this. And so that's the reason for the increased rain potential. But overall impacts, again, uh, there's really no impacts to talk about. Um, maybe considering adding a, a very slight elevated area here in the far southern Texas, maybe for that rainfall, the potential for some flooding, especially given Invest 98L's flooding from earlier. So any additional rain could certainly flood uh, that area, but not really super concerned about any significant impacts. And of course, the rest of Texas 
is fun and dandy itself, so no significant problems expected. But some heavy rainfall and maybe some flooding could be concerned at times, but nothing really other than that. In the rest of the Atlantic Basin, we are still monitoring the potential for additional storms to form sometime here by late August, really the last few days of August, is when we're going to be turning our attention out towards the rest of the basin. If you look at the GFS Ensemble mean sea level pressures at this time, we notice that there isn't really much in the immediate uh, short term. And again, I think we're going to go back into a couple of days of lull before anything really starts to peak up here on NHC's radar. Um, but this dead tropical wave that we were talking about that is kind of out here will be moving into the uh, Caribbean and then traversing the Caribbean and then find itself here in the West Caribbean and Southern Gulf sometime by Friday the 26th of August. And the GFS does go for and does call for the potential for some development here, but this is in the very long range. And you can see there's other systems here that are forming back towards the island chain and out there across portions of the Atlantic. So we're going to have to continue to monitor this. The big problem here, if we actually look at the GFS operational forecast, if we actually look at that relative humidity out here in the long range. Um, again, mostly it's this Gulf system that is going to be interesting, but notice that there actually is a front uh, that is out here. And so this front is going to be squeezing in some dry air and that's not going to be super healthy. We'll see this because this is just an operational forecast, obviously. Um, this is a pretty interesting tropical wave out here by the 27th of August. Um, not really much going on out here. So again, the operational forecast at least, and you can see a little storm does develop here by about the 31st or so. Um, but we'll have to continue to monitor that again. The European from the Zero Z run, um, you can kind of see much of the same general evolution and it actually keeps things quiet for uh, a pretty long time. So we'll see if the basin begins to wake up. Um, again, models were super interesting a couple of days ago, but they seem to kind of back off of that. So we'll be kind of monitoring that. But I still think that, you know, things are going to start to ramp up. Certainly, um, you know, if things don't, you know, ramp up by the last couple of days of August, I'm going to be turning my attention maybe towards even lowering the forecast even further. But uh, we'll cross that bridge once and, and you know, if and when we, we get to that point. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.